why is your visceral fat so high? Now you might have jumped on one of our in-body skills here at the gym. You put your hands on the holders, you put your feet on the posters, and it gives you a reading. Now you are expecting your weight to be somewhere where it is. You're expecting your body fat to be a little bit higher. You're expecting your muscle mass to be a little bit lower because you haven't been working out. But then this visceral fat, you're like, why the heck is it so high? So today, I'm gonna tell you why. Number one, you probably drink too much. If you go over your caloric budget for the day, guess where those extra calories from alcohol get stored? The primary storage mechanism for excess calories when they come from alcohol is in your liver as liver fat. And visceral fat is the fat that lies into your vital organs surrounding your stomach, your heart, your liver, et cetera, et cetera. So when you're drinking and you're boozing too much, even though you think you got it under control, well, guess what? Those extra calories are getting stored into visceral fat. Number two is that you do not sleep enough. And when you don't sleep enough, you're not producing the right hormones and especially the ones that are involved with metabolizing your body fat. So although we are super busy and although we want to stay up late and relax and try to get up early and do everything that we can, if we aren't sleeping, we're not producing the right amount of hormones and those hormones aren't helping you regulate your body fat. Number three, genetics, right? I hate to blame it on genetics because I believe that everybody can override their genetics, but your parents can be partially to blame for the way that your body distributes fat. If your dad was a stomach gainer, then guess what? you are going to be a stomach gainer as well, okay? It doesn't mean that you can't get rid of that because here at Fit Club, I've seen hundreds of people override their genetics, okay? They've even overridden what their families do. So it doesn't mean that you can't override those genetics. It's just the body that they gifted you <laughs> that you've got to now make a transformation, which leads to you grew up on the wrong foods. Now, unfortunately, box foods are super simple. They're easy to eat and we know that our kids are loving them, but a poor diet early on leads to a long-term of poor habits. A lot of people are raised in households where they just think that eating pizza and pizza pops and chicken nuggets and french fries and all this garbage is just a part of what they eat. When I was growing up, there was never any educational videos like this for me to watch or become aware of. And so as such, we just assumed that that was all normal. McDonald's, Toonie Tuesdays, that was just kind of something that we all did as teenagers. But when you're a kid or when you're a teenager, we all find that it's almost impossible to put on weight. Now, some kids do put on weight and obviously they were hit with bad habits early on. Their genetics were bad right from the start. Their parents probably didn't feed them the right foods. They didn't put any restrictions on them. So yes, those kids are probably going to face weight issues. But the thing about it is when normal kids that are super active, like I know my kids at their school, they take recess like three times. After they get off school, they go to a play center where they're all running around doing things. After we pick them up from there, we're taking them to kids events like swimming, basketball, martial arts, or whatever it is. These kids are burning off those one or two chicken nuggets. And so they have a hard time gaining weight. But as we age, the activity drops. We become more lazy. We focus on making money versus moving our body. So we work at desk jobs. And all these bad habits that we've created as a little kid have now stemmed into us as teenagers and into early adults, which make it even worse for when we get into our 30s and 40s because all these added sugars that they add to these foods. And not just regular fats, they're adding extremely bad fats that almost instantaneously get put into your vital organs as visceral fat. And so does that sound like you? Because this is probably going for you, okay? So what do we gotta do? It's time for a change. I want you to save yourself a long-term health issue. You may not think that it's important right now because you're able to do everything that you normally do, but as you get older, you're gonna find that it's gonna get harder or it's gonna take longer to recover from things. So it's gonna take longer for you to burn off that extra weight. If not, if you're gaining weight, it's gonna get worse, okay? When you gain fat, that's even harder to lose than weight. And so this is gonna progressively get into worse. Next thing you know, you're on long-term medications. Now, unless you have some type of long-term backup plan that's going to cover all of your meds, 
then even one or two of these meds could equal into $500 to $1,000 to $2,000 every month that you should be investing in your long-term happiness because as you get older, it's not gonna get easier. And you don't want somebody to be moving you around and being, taking you to all your appointments. You wanna be the person, you wanna be that grandfather, that grandmother that's gonna be there for the kids long-term. You're gonna be healthy with them. You're gonna be involved with their activities. But most importantly, you're gonna be an independent person. And why? Because you made that decision today for change.